Good day and welcome to Big Bad Tech. I'm your instructor, Jim Pytel, and today's topic of discussion is primary resistor reduced voltage starters. Our objective is to introduce a reduced voltage starting method, making use of primary resistors. Reduced voltage starting methods reduce inrush current and modify acceleration and starting torque characteristics. As you are no doubt aware, the direct and instantaneous application of full voltage to a motor at a standstill produces a tremendous surge of current known as inrush. You should be tired of hearing this as I am of saying it, and believe me, I'm tired of saying it. Although brief, inrush can place unnecessarily high demand in the electrical distribution network, and industries often pay a financial penalty for such events. Additionally, the abrupt acceleration of a full voltage motor starter with a motor at standstill may damage the mechanical linkages like belts, chains, shafts, gears, and couplings the system uses to manipulate the applied load. It is for this reason reduced voltage starting methods are employed. Reduced voltage starting methods include, but are not limited to, the electromechanical primary resistors, part winding, Y start, delta run, sometimes called a star delta starter, and the solid state soft starters and motor drives. All these methods serve to limit inrush current and reduce mechanical stresses to the driven load. Today we'll discuss one of these methods, primary resistors, on an introductory level. After we've discussed timer relays, expect to revisit reduced voltage starters and incorporating timers in later lectures. As the title implies, primary resistor reduced voltage starters use a bank of resistors intended to carry primary current. These resistors are placed in series with the motor stator connections. Those of you with an understanding of basic series properties are no doubt aware, current through elements in series is the same. This means that when the S or start contactor closes, the current drawn by the motor must travel through the primary resistors. Ohm's law, perhaps you've heard of it, states that there will be a voltage drop across the primary resistors proportional to the current and resistance. This means of the total applied voltage, the primary resistors will drop a portion and the motor the remaining portion. Kirchhoff's voltage law, quite like gravity, remains in effect at all times. The sum effect of the primary resistor reduced voltage starter method is that when the primary resistors are in series with the motor, the motor initially receives less than the full voltage than if a direct online starter were used. Current being the effect of voltage is therefore less and inrush demand is reduced. Additionally, since power is proportional to the square of current, the starting torque is reduced, thereby limiting stress to the mechanical linkages. Note, given starting torque is reduced, this method may not be suitable for all applications and may necessitate the use of more sophisticated methods like a motor drive. Sophisticated, by the way, is a euphemism for more expensive. We'll discuss motor drives and their incredible advantages in later lectures. Importantly, the primary resistors central to the primary resistor reduced voltage starting method are to be used for starting the motor only. They're not intended to carry primary current for any length of time and are meant to be switched out once a motor has reached a sufficient operational speed. Primary resistors get hot and this dissipated heat is a loss to the system. It is for this reason another contactor is used to bypass the primary resistors once this predetermined speed has been reached. As illustrated, the closure of the S start contactor starts the motor with primary resistors in series with the motor. The primary resistors drop a portion of the applied voltage, and voltage, as seen by the motor terminals, is less. The motor still experiences inrush current, however, it is substantially less than that of a full voltage starter. As the motor accelerates, current subsides, and as such, the voltage drop across the primary resistors decrease and more voltage is applied to the motor. At a certain point, the motor has accelerated to an acceptable speed and the R or run contactor in parallel with the primary resistor bank closes. The primary resistors are in effect short circuited and all current circumvents the primary resistors and favor the closed R run contactor path. Full voltage is applied to the motor already rotating close to nominal speed. Given the motor is not at a standstill, inrush current occurs, 
However, it is again substantially less than if the motor was in a locked rotor condition. The graph of inrush current for the primary resistor reduced voltage starter method in solid blue shows characteristics common of a closed transition reduced voltage starter. We'll learn in later lectures the specifics of other reduced voltage starters. However, an early discussion about open and closed transitions is pertinent at this time. When only the start contactor closes, the primary resistors drop a portion of the applied voltage and inrush current is reduced in comparison to a regular full voltage starter in dashed lines. Inrush current subsides as the motor slowly accelerates. At a certain point X, the run contactor closes and full voltage is applied. The current spikes again, however not nearly what it would be for a regular full voltage starter. The primary resistor reduced voltage starter is a closed transition method. The title closed transition means that at no point is a motor using this method ever de-energized, even momentarily, during the transition from start to run. There's always a pair of hands under it ushering it along and there's not a jarring disjoint in the transition. This isn't always the case for other reduced voltage starter methods. Consider an open transition reduced voltage starter that must necessarily de-energize a spinning motor, even momentarily during the transition from start to run. This would be a graph of inrush current characteristic of an open transition reduced voltage starter. Note the transient spikes that occur during the open shift that do not occur in a closed transition reduced voltage starter. The spike is a product of the open transition between the two X's. Open transition starters try to minimize the transition time between X's to minimize the disturbance. However, it's an intrinsic characteristic of open transition methods. We'll revisit open transition reduced voltage starters in later lectures. As long as we're looking at these inrush current graphs, we should discuss how the timing of the transition from start to run mode affects the inrush current. Note if the transition from start to run takes place quickly, the motor is only given a short time to accelerate. Inrush current during the closed transition will be more. If the transition from start to run mode takes place later, the motor is given more time to accelerate. Inrush current during the closed transition will be less. I must reiterate and emphasize that primary resistors aren't intended to stay in the circuit for any length of time. Banks of primary starting resistors get notoriously hot when they're drawing inrush current and must be rated to handle this level of power dissipation. This power dissipated as heat is a loss to the system and contributes to inefficiencies. For this reason, primary resistor reduced voltage starters are losing favor to increasingly efficient motor drives. Inefficiencies aside, primary resistor reduced voltage starters are inexpensive and they get the job done. Inrush current is reduced and it minimizes mechanical stresses in the driven load. Thus far we've examined only the primary schematic of primary resistor reduced voltage starters. Let's take a look at some sample pilot schematics that govern the operation of primary resistor reduced voltage starters. Our first ladder logic example of a primary resistor reduced voltage starter features an operator initiated start followed by an operator initiated transition from start to run mode. Rung 1 and 2 consist of a three wire control circuit governing the start contactor only. Rung 3 and 4 consist of a three wire control circuit governing the run contactor only. Note the normally open S2 contact in rung 3. This prevents an operator from closing the run contactor without having first closed the start contactor. When an operator presses and releases the start push button, the S contact recoil is energized and its associated contacts change states. The S primary contacts close and the primary resistors limit inrush current. The S1 holding contact closes, as does the S2 interlock in rung 3. An operator witnessing the motor and applied load come up to rated speed, then initiates a transition to run mode by pressing and releasing the run button. When the R contact or coil is energized, the R primary contacts close and the primary resistors are switched out of the circuit. Full voltage is applied to the motor. The R1 holding contact closes. Note the E-stop, stop, a normally closed overload contact, serves to de-energize both the start and run contact or coils, thus opening both primary contacts and de-energizing the motor. The fundamental flaw to our system 
as currently implemented is that it relies upon the judgment of the operator to initiate the transition from start to run. Operators, like most of humanity, have a reputation of being fickle mushheads and cannot normally be relied upon to make consistent and sound judgments based off only visual and audible clues. It is for this reason the run push button has been replaced in our second iteration with a rotational speed switch that closes when the motor has reached an acceptable transition speed. Note, since the operator's subjective judgment has been removed, it's really not necessary to include the S2 interlock in rung 3. The operator still initiates a start by pressing and releasing the start push button. However, only when the motor has reached the set speed of the rotational speed switch does the system automatically initiate a transition from start to run mode by bypassing the bank of primary resistors. Note the R1 holding contact ensures full voltage is still applied to the motor should it experience any lulls in speed after the transition from start to run. The setting of the rotational speed switch could be reduced such that the transition occurs early, or the setting of the rotational speed switch could be increased such that the transition occurs later depending upon the needs of the mechanical system and the desire to limit disturbances on the electrical distribution network. Note that this transition could also be time-based rather than speed-based. We'll discuss primary resistor reduced voltage starters using timers in later lectures. Finally, consider a primary resistor reduced voltage starter that uses not one, but two or more banks of primary resistors to limit inrush current in a stepwise manner. When the S or start contactor only is closed, both primary resistor banks, A and B, serve to limit inrush current. After a predetermined period of time, or after the motor has reached a predetermined speed, the RA primary contactor closes and bypasses the A bank of primary resistors, leaving only primary resistor bank B to limit inrush. Finally, after another longer period of time, or after the motor has reached a greater speed, the RB primary contactor also closes and bypasses the B bank of primary resistors. Full voltage is applied to the motor. This stage approach therefore serves to limit inrush current and mechanical stresses to the applied load via a graduated approach. Note more stages would increase the number of gradual steps, however directly increase the cost, weight, size, and complexity of this system. Here's an example of the pilot ladder logic diagram governing the behavior of this two-stage primary resistor reduced voltage starter using two rotational speed switches. Rotational speed switch A has a setting less than rotational speed switch B. I leave it as an exercise to the viewer to determine how this staged primary resistor reduced voltage starter operates using this ladder logic diagram. You should observe that when an operator initiates a start, both resistor banks A and B limit inrush current. At the speed setting of a rotational speed switch A, resistor bank A should be switched out. At the speed setting of a rotational speed switch B, both resistor banks should be switched out and full voltage would be applied to the motor. Here's a graph of line current for a regular full voltage starter for a lightly loaded motor. The vertical scale is set to 5 amps per division and the horizontal scale is set to 0.2 seconds per division. Notice the huge current draw peaking out around 12-ish amps upon being instantaneously and directly connected to full voltage. Additionally, note the motor accelerates briskly and reaches a stable current draw of maybe 3.5 to 4-ish divisions, meaning it took the motor less than a second to accelerate the applied load. This wouldn't be the method of choice for a fragile electrical distribution network or applied loads necessitating controlled acceleration. In contrast, consider the graph of line current for a 5 ohm primary resistor reduced voltage starter used on the same lightly loaded motor. The vertical and horizontal scale are set to the same respective 5 amps per division and 0.2 seconds per division. Notice the motor now takes 5.5 to 6-ish divisions around 1.2 seconds to accelerate the applied load. Additionally, note that current draw peaks out at only 9 amps. The primary resistor reduced voltage starter therefore serves to limit inrush current demand and mechanical stresses to the applied load. Here's both curves superimposed on one another so you can compare the two methods. 
the full voltage starter is in blue, it is characterized by a substantial inrush and a brief acceleration period. The 5 ohm primary resistor reduced voltage starter is in yellow. It is characterized by less inrush and longer acceleration. If we increase the resistance of the primary resistor reduced voltage starter, we can expect inrush to decrease and the acceleration period to increase. Here's the graph of line current for a 10 ohm primary resistor reduced voltage starter used on the same lightly loaded motor. The vertical and horizontal scale are set to the same respective 5 amps per division and 0.2 seconds per division. Notice the motor now takes 8 to 8.5-ish 8 divisions, or just under 2 seconds to accelerate the applied load. Additionally note that current draw peaks out at only 7 amps. The primary resistor reduced voltage starter with increased resistance therefore serves to further limit inrush current demand and mechanical stresses to the applied load. Here's all three curves superimposed on one another so you can compare the methods. It's kind of busy, but you should get the picture. The full voltage starter is in blue. It is characterized by substantial inrush and a brief acceleration period. 5 ohm primary resistor reduced voltage starter is in light yellow. It is characterized by less inrush and longer acceleration. The 10 ohm primary resistor reduced voltage starter is in darker yellow. It is characterized by even less inrush and even longer acceleration. All right, this about wraps up our introduction of primary resistor reduced voltage starters. Again, be prepared to revisit reduced voltage starters using timers once we've gotten a basic introduction to the timer relay. In conclusion, this lecture took a brief look at primary resistor reduced voltage starters. We learn reduced voltage starters are used to reduce inrush current and modify acceleration and starting torque characteristics. The primary resistor reduced voltage starter method uses resistors in series with the motor intended to carry primary current. When started, primary resistors drop a portion of the applied voltage, and once the motor reaches a predetermined speed or accelerates for a predetermined time, are switched out. Remember to review these concepts as often as you need to really drive it home. Imagine how well lab will go if you know what you're doing. Thank you very much for your attention and interest, and we'll see you again during the next lecture of our series. Remember to tell your Lazy Lab partner about this resource, and be sure to check out the Big Bad Tech channel for additional resources and updates.